Today is a super exciting day. First off, we're doing a vlog style video for the first time ever. Secondly, and most excitedly, we are off to go and visit our partner studio. If you followed us for any moment of time now, you know that we've spent a lot of time facing a lot of obstacles on a few different products of ours. And the first product we ever chose to do was cappuccino cups. Now this sounds like it's going to be super easy, right? But nope. So we ended up finding a partner and we did a first very, very limited batch of just 50 cups. We sold out super quickly. We were really excited. It was our first ever product. And then we placed an order for, I think, 100 or 150 more. And then got cups that looked nothing like the originals. They were a different color. Each cup was a different size. And a lot of them came broken. So we ended up refunding a lot of people. It was a mess. But then, that was also the same time around which I actually decided to take pottery classes myself. Don't worry, this next batch is not made by me. Oh, we... <laughs> No, it was just something I wanted to do on a Sunday. And then in August of this year, I had a conversation with my teacher. His name is Subhash. And he did tell me about another studio that does ceramics. And wait for it, they're right here in Mysore. So... That's where we're headed now. Cool, so we're like 15 minutes away. Look, dude, every product we've done has been so... I, I don't know. It's just been an emotional roller coaster. We get super excited about something and then we face a big snag. And then we're back to the drawing board. And if you know us by now, we just don't give up. So when we found um, this studio, we were super excited. And I know, I know, I know, I know we shouldn't get our hopes up. But I always do. We decided to do like seven or eight samples. You know, we picked a bunch of colors. You don't know how they're gonna turn out. One of them broke. The other one did not look as nice as it did on another product. I think the third or fourth one looked a little painted on, but then there were these two colors, which actually looked amazing. And so these are the ones we've gone ahead with. All right, so a lot of the chilled out vibe, chilled out vibe I say as the car behind me honks away. Uh, but anyway, the, a lot of the chilled out vibe in the city actually comes from it being a yoga hub. So for those of you who do yoga or have heard of, um, you know, different styles of yoga, Ashtanga yoga, which is a more dynamic form of yoga, actually originated in Mysore. It's even called Mysore style yoga. And it's really how we came to the city too. And it was life changing. Drum roll. Here we are. It's just a little further up down the road. Oh, it looks like the firing has begun. Right behind us is the studio that we're going to be working with. And ta-da! My name is Prashant. So, how do you have to do it? Eight to ten So, this is wedging. Huh. It's to remove all of the air bubbles and make the clay mm. more smooth and consistent. It actually requires a hella core strength. For one cup, 400. 400 grams. Yeah. Sweet. We're now beginning throwing. This is like therapy. It almost looks like it's stationary and the wheel is spinning around it. It's a cup. How much? Oh. Okay, so these are some of our cups. And you're probably thinking they look more like soup bowls because they're huge. And the reason is because they shrink by, I think Prashant said 13% when they're fired. So they have to take that into consideration when they actually make the cups. So we're now beginning the trimming process, which is basically getting the cup to its final shape before we put the handle and then fire it. And that's our cup, you guys. This is the process, ma. Starting ka, handle lagane ka. Candle jaise banata hai ma. First toda crashes karta hai ma. Wo correct stage me lagana hai. Kine ye pulling hai. Isse laga ki pull karke handle lagata hai. 
थोड़ा थोड़ा पानी लगा के करना है मैम Someone out there is going to be drinking coffee from this one day. So there's always like a hundred things that can go wrong at every stage, and even after all of that, you still don't know when it's being fired if it's going to turn out okay. So it really is a labor of love. This entire process. So we're at Zerava for the second stage of our process, which is glazing, and we're here with Ritu, who's the co-founder of the studio. Last time we made the greenware stage, yes. steel handle and everything. Yeah. So after that, we keep it around two to three days to get it properly dried. So after that stage, it will turn into like this color. This is like right, properly right, right. bone dry stage. After this, it will go for uh, first firing, okay. which it is called bisque firing, okay. biscuit yeah. firing. Once it's cooled down, we open the kiln. It will turn into this color. So this is like very still it's fragile so this is called biscuit wear crack it like a biscuit yeah <laughs> like that so that is why we might order a few cups just to get it to the biscuit phase so we can break it later for glazing we start with the water finishing because all the dust and everything impurity should go off. otherwise pin holes there are defects it might come so this is a cmc gum we mix with water and uh, make it a liquid kind of thing it will act like a glue so we'll keep it for less than 1 minute there should not be a air bubble then there will be a problem this is a paraffin wax because the wax is there so glaze will not stick to the body so you put the wax on the part that you don't want the glaze to be yeah yeah so that's the color of the yeah, glaze yeah. Uh, and there is a ratio blue color so we have mixed the blue stain uh but at like now it's a very light blue so this icy white color once it's fired at 1240 degrees celsius turns into this magical blue isn't that insane okay so you guys saw the little decal sticker tattoo process and when you flip it over after it's been fired this is what it looks like How cool is that? Okay, before we wrap this one up, let's get a little technical cuz there's more to these cups than meets the eye. Firstly, volume is very important and we've tried to get all these cups to roughly 200 ml. Now, I say roughly because these are fully handmade. Wall thickness is another key factor that really affects the overall drinking experience as it influences the coffee's temperature over time. Also, the thickness combined with the lip profile has a huge impact on how it feels when it touches your lips. Some people call this the kiss of the cup and here we've experimented with a flat square off profile and a few rounded profiles. And while we really liked how the flat one looked, it was way more enjoyable to drink out of the rounded profile. And lastly, if you take a look inside, you'll notice that these are fully bowl shaped as opposed to having a flat bottom like most other cups. This makes it much easier to pour latte art as it allows the milk to flow more easily. man we spent so much time trying to find pretty cups that were also technical here in india and we just hit a wall we also figured we can't be the only ones struggling this much so we were like screw it let's just make our own mm -hmm.